Man, I'm absolutely fascinated with the uh, the world, life and reality, like life and death. I guess you call it reality, or or this semblance of reality. Like, what the fuck is gonna happen after we die? Are we even going to die? Do we live forever now? Like, the way biotechnology has increased. Some some scientists say that if you're gonna be alive in 30 years, or at least an article I read said this. If you're going to be alive in 30 years, you're probably going to be alive in a thousand years because genetic therapy is so advanced. They figure out how to rebind and regrow tel- tel- telomeres, which are like the chromosomes. A chromosome is like a bunch of DNA all packed together. If you, It's funny. If you see a strand of DNA, it like cords back on itself and folds over and over and over and over and over and eventually forms into what's a, called a chromosome. It's just a densely packed bunch of DNA that's like bound in this shape that looks like an X or a Y oddly enough hence the X or the Y chromosome so chromosomes are just a bunch of DNA and then what happens is the chromosome will will transfer to a different place and then unbind so it binds together it moves and then it unbinds kind of like zipping a file emailing it to someone and then they unzip it chromosomes are fan absolutely spectacularly interesting to look at with a microscope check out some like electron microscope imagery of chromosomes in real time but anyway so this dna this dna winds in these chromosomes and then the chromosomes have like caps on the tips of the x and the y these little these little caps are called telomeres and they grow or they shrink and over time as your chromosomal telomeres get older they tend to shrink Different behaviors cause them to to grow or to shrink. Like eating the right foods can cause them to grow. Meditation can cause them to grow. Gene therapy, like legit high tech genetic therapy that is involved, can make them regrow. Like people are doing different tablets and chemicals and pills. Some women are like this. One girl is like a life extension expert. She is her own experiment. Um, and when you can figure out how to regrow your telomeres you can get younger. So you're either getting older or younger at any moment. And it's, that's interesting. Death, you know, death is just because we were always told everyone has, everyone has, is dies. It doesn't mean that that's how it's always going to be. It, that's a real mind bending fuck. Like really? We might live forever. Yeah. Okay. Accept it. Move on. Donald Trump. Bernie Sanders was talking about last night. I watched a video about the Reichstag, the Reichstag. It was the uh, the parliament, Hitler's parliamentary building, just after he got elected uh, in 1933. Like 20 days later, the Reichstag caught on fire, and like Hitler had, you know, the Nazi Party had opponents in the communists and the the Social Democrats were these like other political parties that were really anti-Hitler. Didn't like him, but he got voted in, and uh, 20 days after he got voted into office, Parliament caught on fire. Reichstag caught on fire. No one knew what the fuck was going on. Hitler, like, nobody knew. Several hours went by, and then there was an official declaration from Hitler and his government that it was the communists. And you can see, like, in this documentary I'm watching, like, I mean, the communists are like, uh, like, imagine being a Democrat. You voted for Bernie Sanders. You voted for whoever. But Donald Trump's the president. and Or whatever. And uh, or, or imagine being Mexican. And Donald Trump is president. And Because basically, Hitler treated the communists like Donald Trump is treating the Mexicans. Or the Muslims. I guess he, Hitler treated the Jews like he's treating the Muslims. But is treating the communists like he's treating the Mexicans. Similarly. But, like, there's this moment where they're all, like, it's sinking in, like, what just happened. Our own government is, is like, ha- has gone over the, the deep end. And this is, like, I think when some people realize, like, there's no proof that anyone set these off. But now they just started rounding up communists and throwing them in prison. Right after Parliament, right after the Reichstag caught on fire, Hitler, like, decreed no more civil rights for people. He stripped people of a bunch of civil rights. And then he started rounding people up. And he probably set the fucking fire. Is what it comes to is like it was a false flag operation. It's kind of considered one of like, this is the way Germany got people revved up to go to war. 
and it was like creepy as fuck. Cause like I'm not a big Donald Trump fan. I think he's an idiot. Donald, you're a fucking moron. But I see how you know if you placidly or tacitly stand by and watch some moron become elect. Like if you don't voice your opinion, your frustration. Your anger, your venom, if you don't voice it and internalize it, it's going to come out somewhere else. You know, I think Donald's got, like, some good... I think Hitler had some good intentions to, to really strip the Jews of their financial power. Like, if you look at, like, the, the economic system right now being run by the Rothschild family and the Bank of International Settlements and the Federal Reserve, all these private banks that are owned by these people, all of our money is is promissory notes that are owed to this private company. Like in 1913, we gave our power, we signed our power over to the, the private company that owns all the money in the world. So Trump wants to break that down. Cool. So did Hitler. But Hitler went about it by just killing people. Deporting, killing, that's not the way to do it. That's where Donald Trump loses the plot. De Deportation is not the way to make the world better, safer. Unification is the way to do that. Making our enemies' lives better, you realize they're not actually enemies. They're just people that are suffering. I've been hungry. I've been walking on the streets of New York with not any food and feel so desperate that I would have stole a bike. I, there was a bicycle. I remember walking one day in New York City and I was so hungry. And... I was relatively unemployed. I was making like 200 bucks a week, living in a car, sleeping in my car. And I saw this bike chained up outside of somebody's house, just walking down the street. And I was like, I, I, I didn't even think like, oh, I want to steal that to sell it for money. It was just like, I, how much money could I get for that? Like, it was this feeling of like, I could so easily take that right now. And, you know, my whole normalcy is I would never steal someone's bicycle. If I find a bike unchained out, I would rather chain it up for them or hide it so that they can come back and find it. I'll go out of my way to make sure their stuff doesn't get stolen. But when I was in that hungry, kind of desperate state, it was without question I would have taken it. If I had been really seriously fucked up, desperate, like starving, I would have stole all sorts of shit. I could see myself smashing windows to get food, like, no joke. So these, these, you gotta make their lives better. You gotta give, get food to these people that are hungry, that are willing to kill. If they have internet and, and, and games and television and air conditioning and water and food and big houses for their friends and family to come spend dinners and, and with, they're not gonna go to war. It's a, it comes out of desperation, man. The Khmer Rouge in Cambodia during right after Vietnam, that was Pol Pot. That, that all came from desperation. Desperately wanting the American war machine out of their country. Well, anyway, I'm fascinated with what happens after we... After we pause out of these bodies and probably it's similar to meditating when you're in deep state of meditation how you kind of fly through the universe or have a really great relatively lucid dream where you experience the world flying through it or something but I was thinking about the fervor generated by Beatlemania in the 60s and the fervor generated by YouTube mania in 2006 I mean, I came at it in my full manic force telling you that you can do anything, and I still believe that. Well, you can do anything. You're, Which got me to thinking what happens after we die, if we die at all, is what led me to after that. But reality is so much more than our physical bodies. This much we all know. There's magnetic fields surrounding your body and the earth and the sun and the solar system and the galaxy. There's these fields of magnetic, invisible, relatively invisible energy to the, the human eye. But there, it's these, this wave of magnetic and nuclear energy. You know, protonic energy. That's something that we haven't, we haven't jumped into. You talk about the force. Use the force. 
that's the electromagnetic force. But then there's other forces like gravity, which is could be another type of electromagnetism. I think gravity might be the uh, might be like uh, um, resonating frequency of magnetism. Like when your wheel starts to spin so fast, it looks like it's going backwards. Like that's the magnetism, magnetism, magnetism. Then you start to see gravity, which is this like slower, intense, more deep force that's a result of the the magnetism right and then there's protonic force like the strong and weak nuclear force like two protons that fuse they get so close and they push against each other and against each other and then they come together so hard there's that force of nature that's real I'm going to go to the a Dodgers game in a few hours. Speaking of electromagnetic force, that was a joke. Love you, man. It's a choice. It's a choice to love. It's a choice to choose love. You know, you feel it whether or not you want to. You feel hate and anger whether or not you want to. But which path you choose to explore is up to you. Because I feel frustration and anger. And I feel love and kindness and passion. Compassion. With passion. And I choose love. If I really want to get things done in my life, in your life, make the world better, I choose love. To behave out of love is so much better than to behave out of, out of frustration. I'm frustrated. I get it. People aren't happy. Some people are suffering. Some people have it so fucking good. I have it so good. But I like the more I waste time, sit around waiting for... You know, playing under rail and just waiting for something. The more foreboding I feel like, when's the bomb going to drop? When's, when's all of a sudden the lights going to all go out and people like scream on the streets? And I start to hear like, now it's begun. Like, when is that going to happen? When are the tanks going to start rolling down Wilshire? That's sick. Because I don't want that to happen. But if I just... Ignore it. I just, I don't want to see Hillary Clinton be president. I don't want to even talk about her. I can't stand her. She's gross. She's a liar. She's this fucking rich bitch. Like, super wealthy, obsessed with old school politics. She's like fucking 80. I, I'm trying not to be ageist because someone like Bernie Sanders just totally changes that. It's not about age. You could have a 16-year-old president. You could have a 90-year-old president. If it's the right person, it doesn't matter how old they are. But when they, you know, she's like ancient. She's like a Henry Kissinger military wannabe willing to send people off and die for some silly idea that killing makes us stronger or safer when that's not the case. I mean, it's she's... She's not the right woman. Get it? Elizabeth Warren is the right woman. She's phenomenal. She cares. Can't stand these, these politics. I mean, I love them. I love them. I love them. Big popularity contest. If you love popularity, if you want to be popular, check out politics. You might be popular. It's like they pay you to be famous. Politics.
politics, the economic, socio-economic, political malfeasance. You want to talk about politics? Let's talk about economics. The transfer of goods from one place to another, or services. That's what generates our world, not a bunch of dudes and women in suits talking about stuff and deciding who gets to do what, where, when. It's who's got the food? How easy is it to get that food to the people that need to eat it? That's the backbone of our culture. Without the food and the water, This is, I'm working out right now. I, I can't tell if you can tell. Um, instead of doing some push-ups and getting my aggression out that way, I'm doing it with my words. Because that's what I do. That's what a wordsmith does. Sorry, that peaked the mic. Yaga, yaga, yaga. To say so much, to yield so little, that's fascinating. That I could blow it for, was it biovate, for uh, 40 minutes? But what did I really get accomplished here? Please tell me. I'm, I'm feeling pretty lost right now. I guess because I've been I've been stuck in YouTube land too long. Internet video. You gotta take it to the people. Take it to the people. Take it to the people. It's funny, like I would kinda preach my thoughts about unification, understanding, coming together, being honest, being yourself, being truthful. And you, you do that to the same people for long enough, they get tired of it. Everyone I knew, I preached to, and most, pretty much all of them were like, to the hand, say it to the hand, because the face just don't care. And uh, I was like, oh, no one cares. No one actually gives a shit about what I'm talking about. I'm just a fake. But then I realized I could just like go outside right now and approach someone on the street and say, you know, we're connected. There's an energy field that's unifying our behavior. And right now we're mirroring each other and becoming more like each other. This is how the universe, and people are like, you know, obviously I wouldn't just start talking to them. I would say something, they would respond. The conversation may go in a totally different direction, but everybody gets it. They get that we're unified. They, they understand that we're, that we're the same to a point and then really we're just very similar. People get it. Your your server. I go to a restaurant and a girl comes up to me and I tell her we're the same. We're we are one. And she's like, I I am into that. I believe that. Maybe it's because I don't look like fucking a homeless scumbag that she wants to think like, oh, it's the way you look. It's the energy you feel that I want to believe that in you. That's probably what it is. Because if I'm in a nasty, funky state and I say it to someone, they might just be like, uh, no thanks. So. I want to bring people up to my level. But uh, I don't want to like expend my life trying to make miserable people happy. It's not. I'm happy. I, I, I play video games for four to six hours a day sometimes. That is kind of an empty feeling. If I can share that with a friend or with some friends and play online with them, that's pretty fun. But it's still like... What did we just do for four hours? What could we have done for four hours? How, what, what script, could we have gotten through that script? We could have written a, a full script in the last 12 hours, probably. 10, 10, 15 hours. 